Also amongst the perfect names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Quddus. So we mentioned Al-Malik, now Al-Quddus. And in Surah Al-Hashr, Allah mentioned these names. هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو عالم الغيب والشهادة هو الرحمن الرحيم هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر So that's in Surah Al-Hashr So the name Al-Malik is mentioned there as well The name Al-Quddus is mentioned there as well. Al-Quddus means the one who is clear of any deficiency or imperfection. So Allah is clear of any deficiency or imperfection. Now, this name, Al-Quddus, is one of the names that are specific for Allah Azza wa Jal. So one cannot use that name in reference to other than Allah Azza wa Jal. So, so far we mentioned Allah and we said that's a specific name for Allah. We mentioned Ar-Rahman, said that's a specific name for Allah. We mentioned Ar-Rahim, which is not a specific name for Allah. It can be used in reference to other than Allah. Al-Malik is not from those specific names that are only used when in reference to Allah. But Al-Quddus is one of the names that can only be used when in reference to Allah Azza wa Jal. That's why you can call a person Abdul Quddus, but you don't call him Quddus. Al-Quddus is a name that is specifically used when in reference to Allah Azza wa Jal. What does it mean Al-Quddus? The one who is clear of any imperfection and any deficiency. And the one who is clear of having a partner or having a child. And the one who is clear from all the attributes of the creation. Such as occupying a place or being subject to time. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of places and time. So Allah doesn't need the place because Allah is the one who created it. Allah exists eternally. Allah's existence is without a beginning. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is existent before creating the place and still existent after creating the place. And we say the sound mind judges that a creation that has a body, dimensions, volume, quantity, mass, must be in a place. But the sound mind judges that since Allah is the creator of this whole universe, Allah is the creator of places, Allah is the creator of time, the sound mind judges that it's impossible for Allah to be in need of a place or to be subject to time. Because Allah is the creator of place and time. Because some people might say to you, how is it possible that Allah is not in a place? Say to him, as the sound mind accepted that Allah was without a place before creating the places, the sound mind accepts that after creating the places, Allah is still without a place. It's very simple. But those people who try to say, we cannot conceive in our minds that Allah is not in a place because every existent must be in a place, they are in fact applying the rules that apply to the creation, to the Creator. So they are applying the rules that apply to the creation, to the Creator, and this is invalid. Because they cannot conceive a human being not being in a place. This is a rule that applies to a creation. 
So they apply this rule that is applied to the creation, to the Creator, They want to apply the rules that apply to the creation, to the Creator, We say to them, take it that way. Who created the places? They say, Allah. Who created the places? Allah. So as the sound mind accepted that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is without a place before creating the place the sound mind accepts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is without a place after creating the place and that's the meaning of the statement of Imam Ali radiallahu anhu كان الله ولا مكان وهو الآن على ما عليه كان كان الله meaning Allah's existence is without a beginning and nothing else is without a beginning. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is without a beginning. Then he said, Wala makan, and there was no place. Place is created by Allah. Ala ma alayhi kan, and Allah is now as he was, meaning without a place, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was without a place before creating the places. Allah is still without a place after creating the places. So we all know that the universe is created. We all know that places are created, time is created. So Allah doesn't need the creations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need the creations. The creations need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every move we make. Your heart is beating by the power of Allah Azza wa Jal. So without the power of Allah Azza wa Jal, how can your heart beat? You know yourself, you do not control your heart when it's beating. That's why when a person dies, they try to revive him. They try to revive him when his heart stops from beating but if Allah willed for it to stop completely they won't be able to revive that person that's it he's dead you are in need of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah is giving you the power to breathe so if Allah takes that power away from you you won't be able to breathe that's why if you think about these endowments of Allah upon you in every move you make in everything you are doing you can recall the endowments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you. And by this you reflect the greatness and the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you. So that's why we are in need of Allah, but Allah doesn't need us. As Allah doesn't need the humans, Allah doesn't need angels. Allah doesn't need places. Allah doesn't need the arsh. Allah doesn't need the kursi. Allah doesn't need the skies. Because Allah is the creator. So Allah's existence is without a beginning. And when you say without a beginning, eternally, there was no place. Eternally there was no arsh. There was no kursi. There was no sky, no earth. Nothing from this universe. Because this whole universe is created, it has a beginning. So Allah created this whole universe. Allah is the one who brought it from the state of non-existence into the state of existence. So Allah doesn't need it. So the one who is saying that after Allah created the arsh, Allah sat on it, he's claiming that Allah changed. And that Allah needed the arsh. The one who says that Allah, after he created the skies, Allah dwelled the skies he's saying that Allah has changed and change is the most obvious sign that indicates that such a thing is a creation look at yourself you are changing every day you change and you are not changing yourself you know that you grow older and older you cannot stop it so you are not changing yourself. There is one who is changing you. Your mother is not changing you. 
because your mother wouldn't want you to be old. Your father is not the one who is changing you. Your neighbors, those around you. So who is changing you? Who is making you grow from this age to that age? Allah. So when you look at yourself, you are changing. This is a sign that you are in need of the one who is changing you. And the one who is in need is weak, and the one who is weak cannot be God. It's very simple. The one whose heart is open will understand this. But the one whose heart is blocked and locked, he cannot understand this. That's why you find some people will ayyazu billah, although they know that Allah is the creator of the arsh, the throne, they still believe that Allah is sitting on the throne. So according to them, Allah wasn't sitting, then he became sitting. Plus, what does it say in the Quran or the Hadith that Allah is sitting on the throne? There is nothing from that. Even the word sitting does not apply to Allah because the word sitting applies to the one that has a bottom part and upper part. So this does not apply to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So those people know as a matter of fact that Allah is the creator of the arsh. So when they misinterpret the ayah Ar-Rahmanu ala al-arsh istawa which means here as we are explaining that the arsh is dominated by Allah's power. The arsh is preserved by Allah, controlled, subjugated by Allah Azza wa Jal. All these meanings befit Allah Azza wa Jal. Because you know the arsh is suspended in the space. Subhanallah, it's carried in the space, suspended by the power of Allah Azza wa Jal. It doesn't fall on the skies. The skies also are carried by the power of Allah, they do not fall on earth. Allah said, رَفَعَ السَّمَاءَ بِغَيْرِ عَمَدٍ تَرَوْنَهَا No pillars. And you know the thickness of the first sky is 500 years. It's something solid. We are living here on earth, and if we think about this fact, that we are walking under this roof, if you want to say, which is the sky above us with no pillars. No pillars carrying the skies. So how the skies are preserved from falling on earth by the power of Allah. How the arsh is preserved from falling on the skies by the power of Allah. So the arsh is preserved, subjugated and controlled by the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ar-Rahmanu ala al-Arshi istawa. Allah didn't say Ar-Rahmanu ala al-Arshi jalas. Allah didn't say jalas which means sitting. Allah didn't say Allah sat on the throne. So when those people are translating istawa as sat, wal-ayyazu billah, they are likening Allah to the creations. Because sitting is the attribute of the creations. Animals sit, humans sit, angels sit. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not resemble the creations in any way whatsoever. So if you think about this name, Al-Quddus, the one who is the clear of all imperfection. The one who is clear of any deficiency. The one who is clear from having a partner or a child and is clear from resembling the creations, that will be sufficient for you to clear Allah from any resemblance to the creations. And the one whose heart is open, the one who is mindful, can understand. From this ayah, لَيْسَ كَمِسْلِهِ شَيْءٍ can deduce all these meanings. لَيْسَ كَمِسْلِهِ شَيْءٍ Nothing resembles Allah in any way whatsoever. That will be enough. But some people, they recite it and they still say, Allah has hands, eyes, face, body, shin, 
fate, wal ayyazu billah, they liken Allah to the creations. So what's the meaning of Al-Quddus? It negates what they believe. It negates what they believe. Al-Quddus, the one who is clear from all imperfections, the one who is clear from any deficiency, the one who is clear from having a partner or a child or any resemblance to the creations.